After a second round of good times in England, and having recorded a ton of videos, I said farewell to my friends as it was time to make my way to Kenya. I travel on a budget, and that meant sleeping over at the airport in London so that I could get my very early morning flight with Kenya Airways. I just touched down in Nairobi, Kenya, in Africa. I'm actually in Kenya right now. I'm in Africa. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Majorly freaking out. <laughs> Now when it comes to my Kenyan videos, there's a lot of gaps in the storyline. Um, I didn't take as much footage as I usually do, and that's because when I arrived in Kenya, I was quickly told not to take valuables out of the house with me. Be it my camera, passport, lots of money, anything, um, because it wasn't safe. And if I didn't want to lose it, I should leave it at home. Uh, and since they are the locals, and therefore the experts, I listened to them. They said that they don't really take things, or that much um, stuff with them, especially expensive stuff, uh, because a lot of times it can get nabbed. And me being a white guy, I stuck out like a sore thumb. So uh, I was much more likely to be targeted. Um, but I will say that Nairobi taught me something um, no other city has taught me, and that is confidence. I've never had to have as much confidence as I had to have when I was in Nairobi. Walking through the streets, it was really important that I kept my head up and always looked like I knew where I was going. Because the minute you break, the minute you show any sign of uncertainty and you know that you're lost, they prey on you. Whether it be touts trying to sell you something, a tour, you have it, um, or you know someone who wants to steal something from your pocket. Uh, there's a lot of schemes that can happen. And if you show that you are a bit overwhelmed and don't know where you are, which even though I was, I didn't show it, uh, they will take advantage of that, unfortunately. Uh, so I always had to walk through Nairobi with my head up and always pretend like I knew where I was going, even though I usually had no idea. Um, so I I'm thankful for Nairobi, even in that, in that I was able to learn that, that skill of confidence. And Nairobi was so cool because this has never happened to me that I have, was in a place for two full days and didn't see a single other white person. Some people would be freaked out about that. I loved it. It was so cool. Um, yeah, only foreigner for two days. So authentic. I was in the thick of it. It was awesome. In Nairobi, I would be staying at the home of the lovely and outrageously hilarious Mama Monica. She provided me a comfy bed to sleep in and a new set of friends, her family. Just keep laughing. This is Carol. Uh, <laughs> She's great. Yeah. And her hair is fabulous. <laughs> she doesn't like it, but I do. <laughs> great. So wave to the camera. Okay. Just no, give me a wave. There we go. That's what I like. Waka, waka. <laughs> Each day I would take a mutatu, the local form of transportation, into the city center of Nairobi. Out of nowhere I met up with my friend Joanna from high school, who happened to be in Nairobi at the same time. We went to a restaurant called Carnivore, where as you can guess, we ate all things meat. On my second and last night in Nairobi, I joined Mama Monica at a neighbor's graduation and birthday party. There, we chowed down on cake, I made some new friends, and we sang Happy Birthday, Kenyan style. Birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Makena. Happy 
birthday, <laughs> Next time on Backpack with Brock. Things get authentic when I get to live with a Maasai family, don their traditional clothes, and have the honor of witnessing a ceremony that happens once every 10 years. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave a comment, or you can subscribe by clicking on me right here. Thanks for watching.